Hey there, CPO here, and we're back with the Flight Model Apollo 50 build. Now, next I'm going to work on the tail assembly. Some models you can put the horizontal stabilizer together first, and some you have to put the vertical stabilizer together first. I did the vertical stabilizer on this because you can do that first, but make sure you don't put the entire uh, horizontal stabilizer assembly together. So I'm putting on just one side of this, uh, using the same hinge that we used with the uh, the wing, but you can't put on both sides. I'll show you why here in a second. Next thing I'm doing is just going through and uh, freeing up the holes for my control uh, rods and then also uh, the control um, bolt for the rudder. And I'm just using a soldering iron to uh, to melt the covering on this works really well. And then I need to also uh, remove the covering from the area where the horizontal stabilizer is going to go. Soldering iron works really well. I've got this is kind of an old, uh, not super hot soldering iron, but it gets the job done. And I'll get most of the material at least uh, moved out of the way with this. Um, but I find on these bigger slots, sometimes it's helpful to take a, a razor and just kind of remove any of that excess uh, film. But get that nice and cleaned out. And there's the razor, uh, removing a little bit of that excess. All good. All right, with the... Uh, Horizontal stabilizer, as you can see, I only have one elevator in, and the reason is you have to fit this through that hole, and it will not go through if you have both elevators in. So uh, you can choose to not put the uh, the elevators on until afterwards. I decided to just put one on. I don't know, whatever. Uh, so now the most important part of this is getting everything uh, lined up. You want to make sure that everything is symmetrical from side to side, and I use a variety of measuring methods to do this. Um, I generally like using a string. I've got some construction string that doesn't stretch at all. Uh, and I'm using that just to check and make sure I'm getting the same distances between various points on the aircraft. Um, I even came up with a little dowel and uh, like rubber band. This is actually a, um, a propeller band. So um, for a measuring device, so I can get consistent uh, measurements from side to side. So whatever method you uh, prefer, but just make sure that that is completely straight. Uh, it's going to become very important. And then, uh, and I also measure from wing tip to the uh, stabilizer tip there, um, making sure that I'm getting the same distance side to side. I probably spend more time stressing over this than uh, than I need to, but I'm really uh, wanting to make sure that I get it just as perfect as I can get it. Once I'm sure I've got it where I want, I use a, a ballpoint pen to uh, mark where I'm going to remove the covering from. So uh, just right around the edge on both sides, top and bottom. The closer you can get to that seam, obviously the better the more accurate your cut's going to be. Got a little bit of the covering, uh, the silver uh, trim coming up. That'll easily go back down with an iron, so I'm not too worried about that. But you can see where I have the pen marks there, uh, particularly on this other side there. You can see that. So I need to remove the covering. Um, you could do that with a razor. Um, I actually decided to use the fine tip of my soldering iron just to remove the material right along that line using a straight edge, of course, uh, to get that nice and straight. That is a metal, a uh, little aluminum ruler, so the soldering iron doesn't really bother it. This allows you to remove the material without cutting into the wood because I, I don't want to do anything that's going to compromise the integrity or the strength of the stabilizer so this turned out to be a pretty pretty easy way to do that and then i just come in there and peel off the covering in the middle unfortunately it didn't come off in one whole piece like i was hoping but uh didn't take much to get it uh pulled out of there 
So do that on both sides. We need to do that so that the epoxy can uh, can really um, connect with that wood and the uh, the wood on the actual fuselage. All right, so now this goes back in, and I redo all of that alignment that I did before. Although right now it's easier because I have the uh, the marks that I can align with, you know, for the where the covering's been removed. Um, but first, before I push it all the way in, I'm going to add the epoxy. Again, I'm using a 30-minute epoxy. I want to give myself plenty of time to work here so I don't feel rushed or pressured. And uh, put that on top and bottom. And you'll notice I've got some newspaper down. That's because uh, I didn't want to drip epoxy all over the place, and it will drip and squirt out and all that good stuff. So... So now I go through and get everything lined back up. Uh, in fact, I redo all of those same measurements, uh, getting rid of all the extra epoxy. And, uh, you know, I've got a few minutes here to make sure I've got everything just right. So I'll measure, readjust, measure, readjust, and get it exactly where I want it. Then once I got it in place uh, where, uh, where I was happy with the symmetry, I decided to add a little bit of extra epoxy to the crack um, between, you know, where the uh, the two surfaces meet, just to kind of fill that in, and uh, also, uh, you know, then cleaned everything up with the acetone so there's none left uh, external on the covering. And the acetone works really well. Here you can see where I'm applying a little extra epoxy, pushing it into the crack, and then uh, with acetone cleaning out any of the excess. So that just fills that gap um, nice and solid. Then I can put on the other side of that uh, elevator, or if you haven't put on both elevators, you can put on both elevators by now. But there we go. That is the tale. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.